Hello, my name is Miss A.G., Library Assistant at Ruby Young Elementary. I'm going to be reading to you with permission from Puffin Books, The Road to Paris. It is written by Nikki Grimes. Now, this is a chapter book about Paris, who is a young lady uh, who um, had some family issues and she ended up in foster care. And um, so this is about her journey through that system and her decision at the end may surprise you. So let's go on this journey together, The Road to Paris. The Road to Paris. Chapter one, running away. The trouble with running away is you know what you're leaving behind, but not what's waiting up ahead. Paris Richmond learned that a year ago when she and her brother Malcolm ran away from a foster home in Queens. They slipped out of the brick two-story house one morning in late summer, hours before the heat would wring them dry. Malcolm moved free and easy in shorts and t-shirt his head shaved cool and clean for summer. Paris, on the other hand, felt weighed down by the humidity. Her sundress kept her body comfortable enough, but her thick halo of blonde waves hung limp and heavy this time of year. She kept stopping to brush stray strands from her eyes off her damp forehead. Sometimes she'd rest her suitcase on the sidewalk so she could use both hands. Paris trudged down the street after her brother, totally oblivious to the amazing swath of sky, a marble of sun-streaked clouds and marine blue patches. Her attention was on Malcolm's rapidly receding back. Hurry up, said Malcolm, or we'll get caught. Is that what you want? Paris shook her head no. The last thing she wanted to do was get caught. The foster home they were leaving was no place to be. The mother, Mrs. Boone, slapped Paris around every time her real daughter did something that called for punishment. You'd think she was playing some freak game of tag, and every single time, Paris was it. The woman never tried beating on Malcolm, though. But then, why chase down a ten-year-old who'd sink his teeth into you if he got half the chance when you've got a quiet, acquiescent eight-year-old to kick around? Last week, Mrs. Boone had grabbed Paris and dragged her off to the bedroom a strap dangling from her free hand. Malcolm followed close behind. What are you doing, he asked. Stay out of this, Malcolm, warned Mrs. Boone. You leave Paris alone, he screamed. She didn't do anything. But the woman turned a deaf ear, locking the bedroom door behind her. Malcolm banged his fist on the door. You better not hurt my sister, he yelled. Malcolm couldn't yell loudly enough to cover his sister's cries, but that never stopped him from trying. After each beating, the daughter, Lisa, would swear she had no clue how her mama got the mistaken notion that Paris was the one who'd smashed a favorite vase or stained the kitchen tablecloth or whatever. My name is Paris, not stupid, Paris would say to herself. And the last time Lisa made up a story, Paris called her a liar to her face. Lisa was shocked. Paris was rather surprised herself. Malcolm was usually the one who did all the talking. Generally, Paris kept her thoughts to herself. She didn't want to give Mrs. Boone any excuse to lock her up in the closet again, like she'd done every day the first month Malcolm and Paris were there. They told their mother one of the few times she'd called, but Viola just thought they were making it up. No matter what Paris said or didn't say, the beatings kept coming, and there didn't seem to be anything to do about them except run away. Early that morning, Malcolm snuck into Mrs. Boone's purse and grabbed enough cash for the train and bus. He and Paris tiptoed out of the house while the Boones were enjoying their Saturday morning sleep-in. The streets were empty at that hour, except for a drunk huddled in a vestibule, and he didn't pay much attention to a couple of kids passing by. Paris told her legs and feet to get a move on, and they did. 
Her suitcase kept bumping up against her leg, but she didn't care. She and Malcolm practically ran the last half of the block and set a dog off barking like crazy. Paris looked around to see if it was coming after her and almost missed a curb. Good thing Malcolm had waited for her at the corner. He caught her by the elbow before she toppled. Watch yourself, said Malcolm in his grown-up voice. They hurried to the bus stop two blocks over and stood so long their feet grew roots in the sidewalk. Finally, the bus came. Malcolm climbed up first to pay for their fare, then reached out for his sister's suitcase. On another day, she might have told him that she could do it herself, but not this day. Her arm was sore from lugging that battered old case. She handed it over. Paris followed Malcolm to the middle of the bus. Soon as they were settled, she turned to her brother and asked, Malcolm, are you sure you know where we're going?